Hey everybody, we're here inside the Model 3 again, and today we're going to be talking about vampire loads and sentry mode power consumption. I've had a lot of questions about this lately. How much power does the Tesla use when it is completely off, and exactly how much power does sentry mode use? We don't have exact numbers on sentry mode's power consumption, but it's likely somewhere in the range of 200 to 250 watts or so. Now those numbers are most likely peak power consumption, so when sentry mode is doing whatever it is that is most power intensive, that's what we're talking about when we say power consumption could be 200 to 250 watts. Remember that this system is a big computer and we have a lot of cameras around the car. The cameras are on in center mode and the computer is reviewing the footage and deciding what's going on outside the car. And it will then take actions based on that motion. The first step is to display that little HAL icon in the center console on the screen. The second step would be to play some music and then of course upload photos so that way you can review them on your Tesla account. Now, since we do have our Model 3 listed for sale, we've had a pretty good opportunity to test out the power consumption in center mode because we've had this parked for a number of days straight without driving it since we're trying to keep the miles lower on this car. To test out center mode power consumption, I left the Tesla alone with center mode activated. We turned it on on Saturday at 7 a.m., came back on Monday at 7 a.m., and the vehicle had consumed about 1.15 miles of range per hour that sentry mode was active on the car. That's a little bit less range loss than some folks out there have been commenting. Some of the forum folks have been saying about 1.5 miles. Now we are running the latest generation of the software, so if I pull up the little software menu here and take a look at that, we're running uh, 2019.12.1.2. The delta between this and some of the range estimates that I've seen could be that Tesla has reduced overall power consumption with sentry mode. But again, remember that we are running the computer with its digital signal processors, video processing software, etc. It's looking all around the car. So overall, that consumption seems pretty logical to me. And it's something that I'd be willing to do in a vehicle like this if I was parking it in a high risk area. So if I normally parked this and drove this around suburbia, it was in my garage, I went to the office, came back home, etc. But then once or twice a month, I wanted to go into the big city. I wanted to go into San Francisco or downtown San Jose or Oakland or something along those lines. And I was going to go to a bar or a restaurant or whatever. You might want to enable center mode in those situations. And a mile of range per hour really isn't a big deal to be sure that your vehicle has that extra layer of protection. The big deal here, of course, would be if you wanted to park this and go away on a longer vacation. If you wanted to take this, leave it at the airport and you wanted to be sure that nobody was door dinging your car, or at least you'd have evidence that that happened. Or if you wanted to leave your car at work and then you wanted to take a week's vacation to Hawaii, something along those lines, then the overall power consumption of the sentry mode system may be a bit more of a concern. Sentry mode will automatically disengage if the battery drops below 20% capacity. So in those situations, if you did leave it parked at the airport, at least you would have some protection in sentry mode, but then sentry mode would turn itself off at the 20% mark in order to make sure that when you got back from your trip, you'd be able to drive it to the nearest supercharging station. To highlight this, we can take a look at our app right here. You can see that I have 163 miles of range. I don't know if the camera can focus in on that with the glare right there, but see 163 miles of range left. When we started this experiment out, I had 222 miles of range according to the car. And it's actually been uh, about 50 some odd hours now, not 48. We probably crested over 60 actually by the time we're recording this video. Still again, about 1.1 to 1.15 miles of loss in terms of range per hour that sentry mode is on. The other big question that I've received lately is how about power loss when none of these features are on? So I don't have, for instance, in here in this uh, screen here, we have the option for cabin overheat protection. That is off. I also have center mode off. If I were to park this car and just leave it for a week, how much battery power would this vehicle lose over that time period? Well, in our estimates so far, just leaving the vehicle alone, not doing anything, seven days we have been able to not drive this, we lost only two miles of overall range in that time period. Personally, that's not bad because again, this does have a cell modem, and even though the software is asleep, there are still some computer systems that are running in here. Now, admittedly, that is more range loss than we see in some of the competitive EVs out there. I don't have access to a Nissan Leaf, but we're told by Nissan that their range loss is lower than that. We do, however, have a 2016 Soul EV, and it does not lose range that quickly. The most we've ever lost is about one mile of overall range after two weeks of leaving the vehicle on its own. So theoretically, this has four times the vampire loss that we see in the Soul EV, but one mile of range for a week really isn't a huge deal. 
The obvious way that you can avoid these losses is to leave your Tesla plugged in. So if I were to leave this vehicle plugged in at home or at the office, uh, then sentry mode could run without a problem because it would be consuming power from the level two charger. One peculiar thing that I did notice, and perhaps that's just peculiar to this vehicle, is that if it was left plugged in over a few days and it had lost a few miles of range due to whatever was on the car, whether we'd turn center mode on and off, that sort of thing, I did have to go back in the app and tell it to charge back up again to either that 90% limit or the 100% limit. That is a little bit different than some of the other EVs out there that will just continue sucking power down from the EVSE. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'll let you all decide that down there in the comment section below. Also, let me know if your Tesla Model 3, Model S, or Model X will keep itself charged at that 90% level when it's plugged in. Let me know if that's just peculiar to my particular model. Maybe I've done something wrong there. But again, if I did go back in the app and tell it to charge, then it would charge back up to its 90% or its 100% level. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, be sure and hit that subscribe button down there in the bottom of your screen if you haven't already done so. Find us over at facebook.com slash alexnatos. And of course, check up on our latest Tesla videos. Be sure to find us over at facebook.com slash alexandautos. And if you want to support this channel, you can always head over to patreon.com and make a monthly pledge. I'll see you guys later.